Yo, YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy, Salvation Lee. We are back with the video, guys. And today, man, Hard Point 101. How to play Hard Point in Black Ops Cold War. I did a video like this back on Modern Warfare. I thought it'd be good to update this, do it a little bit earlier in the year, because we talked so much about Hard Point and how to play it on this channel and how to play competitive Call of Duty as a whole on this channel. So, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell. But at the end of the day, Hard Point is pretty simple. You're in the hill, you get points, you win the game. It's pretty straightforward at the end of the day but there's so much that goes into it that makes it incredibly difficult. So we're gonna talk about the keys to hard point and the things that you have to understand about the game mode to be great at it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's go. So the first overarching key of hard point is map control. And at the surface again, pretty straightforward, but when you dig deep, it gets pretty complicated pretty quick. Of course, when it comes to map control, there's so much that goes into it when it comes to spawn knowledge, how you position with your teammates, and funneling the opposing team into certain areas to maximize the amount of time that your team can have on the hill. For example, when you have control of a hard point, you're trying to push out and create map control for you and your team, set up in areas that give yourself the best advantage in a gunfight, but also creates enough space between you and the opposing team and where they're spawning to make it as hard as possible for the opposing team to get pushed up towards the hard point. So really at its core, map control starts with spawn knowledge and understanding that if me and my teammates are positioned in this way, the opposing team is going to spawn over in this area or over in that area, depending on how we're set up. And so, of course, in Modern Warfare, the spawns were, they were interesting. It took teams a long time to figure out this new, unique, weird, not totally reliable system for spawns. In Black Ops Cold War, there's still some issues. And so we're not gonna talk specifically about any spawn yet because certain things are just getting changed they just had a spawn update a few days ago for a certain hardpoint maps so things are going to change in that way which we'll talk a lot more about hardpoint spawns in the upcoming few weeks for sure so stick around of course but overall as a team and an individual you have to be very aware of what your positioning means and how it influences the spawns for the opposing team and that's something you just have to continue to work on learn understand when you're playing just pay a ton of attention to early on in the years how these spawns work and what this setup correlates to that spawn and thought processes like that to really shorten the amount of time it takes for you to learn the maps, learn the game and how it plays overall. And while we're on the spawn topic, another aspect of spawn usage is how you can influence and block spawns at the back and how you can anchor for your team and rotate for spawn. So heading into kind of the second key of hard point is rotations and understanding how to influence spawns to your team's advantage. And that kind of ties into each other, but those are overarching themes for sure of hard points. So, you know, in a good game, people aren't gonna spawn where you're looking. Of course, you know, Modern Warfare Hackney Yard has other things to say about that. But if you're looking in an area that should be blocking the spawn. So when you're listening or you're watching competitive COD, you're watching a stream, you might hear the guy saying like, yo, go block the spawn, go block that spawn. You know, go grab our back spawn. And generally that means that the player is heading back there. They're gonna look at it and that's gonna block the opposing spawn for the, the team, spawn them out and flip the spawns for your advantage to whatever hard point hill it is. And so that's just something that you have to really consider and how you play that. And it's definitely something that every good team uses to their advantage inside the game. So rotations as a whole, of course, means you are setting up from one hill to the next. And generally one player will usually head out a little bit earlier than the other three to start pushing for that map control of the new hill. That'll generally start around 30 seconds left on the current hill. For sure by 20 seconds, the opposing team who does not have current control of that hill will be rotating to the next one to give themselves the best chance to set up at the new hill. You're always trying to play for the spawns that are most advantageous to the upcoming hill. So for example, if you think back to last year on Gunrunner, which I know is hard to do, it hurts, it hurts a lot. But at the end of the day, you know, you wanted to spawn on the C flag side. You wanted to spawn on the bathroom side. You wanted to spawn on the train track side of the hill because P1 was in the middle. So that gives you the advantage for the second hill. So for example, on P5, the last hill on the map in the warehouse on the left side of the map, a team would try to rotate out and grab the, the railroad spawns for P1 and P2 to give themselves an advantage on the upcoming hills. And so, so in hard point, you and your team are really thinking ahead about how you want to set up for the new spawns, how you want to set up for the new hills, and how you want to position yourselves in these games to maximize every hill in the game. And there's also other aspects of rotations that are important to consider about the routes that you take to rotate. If you rotate in the wrong way, it could potentially spawn out the opposing team, 
create or spawns for you and your team so as the meta starts to develop we'll talk more and more about that specifically for call of duty cold war since we're only like two weeks into the game right now we're still learning the hard point spawns and how they're going to work and the rotations and how the the maps are influenced and again the spawns are still being updated so there's a lot to go on there we'll talk a lot more about the, the maps individually in the upcoming few weeks and months those routes that you're taking on the rotations are very important to understand and how they influence the game and not all routes are created equal some are definitely better than others inside of hardpoint themselves so the next overarching key of hardpoint that we're going to talk about is a theme in all of call of duty but specifically extremely important in hardpoint and respawn as a whole but it's how you push as a team how you trade kills how you play together baiting and trading as a whole is what we got to talk about next so i know for me early on i didn't really understand or recognize the importance of how baiting and trading work and this is something that took me a while to understand and really get better at. And it's something I continually get better at and recognizing how to use and utilize every game I play. And so baiting and trading and how you push with your teammates is crucial. Obviously, this has to come with a lot of awareness and communication with the minimap and how you're set up. And of course, the communication with your team as a whole. So of course, you want to play together to try to break these hard points and push as a team. Overall, there's generally one player who ends up going in first. And that first player's job is to get guys weak, get information, expose guys' spots where they're, where they're sitting. And the next guy comes in, usually the Slayer comes in and cleans up the mess that the entry player left in front of him. And so the Slayer's getting, picking up the two piece. He's picking up the kills inside the hill. That's called baiting and trading. The first guy that jumps in is baiting. The second guy that comes in is trading. Or you can also bait and trade by like shoulder peeking. So you're wiggling on a doorway or a window or something like that. And then the second player, the Slayer comes in and uses that information to slay him out, get those kills. That's kind of how baiting and trading ends up playing out. And it's really important to do those types of things with your teammates and how you want to break the hills if you want to be a successful hard point team. So any new team, that's really struggling can definitely improve in how they play together, how they're patiently pushing towards hills. So you're better off giving up the five to 10 extra seconds to push and trade with your teammates than the solo push by yourself. Then your teammate solo pushes by himself. Now you're spawning up, you're solo pushing by yourself. That's a big time problem and an issue that even good teams can get into sometimes if they're in a bad funk or they're struggling on a map or the vibes just aren't there things start going wrong and you're losing that patience that you need to have inside the game. And that's just something that's incredibly important inside of Hardpoint. And it can sometimes be hard to notice or understand why you're really struggling so much if you're not ultra aware of it at all times. So the next key, which is also important in how you break and push and play as a team, is the usage of stuns, nades, trophies, and smokes inside of Hardpoint. This is crucial. This can make and break a Hardpoint in how you play, playing for spawns, playing to break a hill, playing for anything in any situation, these are important in every way. So of course, they can help you inside the gunfights. We all know that, we've played pubs, we know how to stun, we know how to nade to get guys weak. They can help you inside gunfights, but also they can help you get information. A stun, a flash, a nade, they're all information. So if you nade a certain corner and it doesn't hit anyone, that's information that your teammates now don't have to waste their time trying to clear that area of the map. You throw a stun, it's clear, you're calling that out, your teammates are calling that out. So you and your teammates don't have to waste time checking that window or checking that doorway or checking that side room. They're also important for putting pressure on the hill and how you break. And then trophy systems are crucial in every way inside Hardpoint. And so it's important for your team to understand where the best places to put trophies are, to protect your trophies in a way, to put them down so they're not easily destroyed, to put them in a place where they're not gonna get shot, to basically ration out your trophies at the right times, to use them to benefit your team the most. And of course, you're communicating how you're destroying the opposing team's trophies and where their trophies are located. So if you fly into the hill, the entry guy flies in, he calls out that there's a trophy in there, or one person throws a stun or a nade and the trophy destroys that stun or nade, you gotta call that out and identify the trophy. And generally, you should be trying to destroy that trophy as fast as possible because the stuns, nades, and flashes can be the X factors in the game for you and your team. If you're doing a good job of destroying them around the map, it can literally change everything. There's sometimes when you play against teams and you're like, dude, are we even putting down trophies? Like, yo, trophy guys, like, are we putting down trophies? And they're like, dude, I've been throwing them the whole game. It's because the other team has been doing a very good job of destroying them. And probably your team hasn't done a good job of putting them in places where they're not gonna be easily destroyed. And that, that can literally change a map and flip it on its head. Last thing with the tacticals is smokes. And smokes are an X factor in hard point every single year, at least when they have smokes in the game. Smokes can cut off an opposing team's lines of sight. You can use them offensively or defensively to give yourselves the best chance. You can throw a defensive smoke 
to block a long line of sight for a main AR, forcing the opposing team to run through the smoke, throwing a smoke at an opposing head glitch that ruins that head glitch and allows you extra time in the hill. You can of course use it offensively to attack a hill and break a hill. And again, you're trying to put trophies in a spot that counter the best smoke spots. That was really important on Hackney. On how you would get trophies down on police cars, like on P2, the unbreakable hill to make sure it was completely unbreakable. Things like that overall are incredibly important. And we're gonna talk a lot more about that in the future as well as we learn more about these maps. So the last thing, which I'm sure we're gonna talk about more again, as the meta starts to develop for Black Ops Cold War, is how the roles play out inside of Hardpoint. So of course, this year we've gone from 5v5 in you know Black Ops 4 and Modern Warfare to now back to 4v4 for Black Ops Cold War. And that makes a big difference inside of Hardpoint and how it plays. Because in 5v5, you had five roles that were definitely more separate than they are in 4v4. In 4v4, everyone's doing a lot more around the map to make it happen. Of course, you're still gonna have a guy who's more of the slayer, who's pushing out for map control, who's roaming the middle of the map, generally not playing as close towards the hill. Then you have one guy who's gonna generally play closer to the hill. The OBJ role isn't as similar as it used to be where you're just sitting inside the hill. You're like, you're the hill guy. It's more about how you push towards the hill and you're playing in those small areas to really make things happen. And then you've generally got a guy who's trying to rotate early and play for that map control, play for those lines of sight. Then you've got the main AR who's locking down the long lines of sight. He's doing things that, you know, give your team the map control. It used to be called anchoring, but that's not exactly how it works anymore. You're not going towards the back of the map. You're only going to the certain area that you have to go to make sure you secure the spawns. And then from there, you're pushing out, making sure you guard your spawns and guard the hill in the best way possible. And so the roles are gonna be a little bit different this year, which we're gonna talk more about again as the meta continues to develop and we watch a little bit more professional Call of Duty as more and more scrims keep happening. So overall, this is basically hard point 101. These are the most important things. We, there's a lot more to go over about how you use the certain weapons. Like if you're a flex, should you use an SMG on a certain map or an AR on a certain map and how you wanna play those strategies and things like that. There's a lot of different variations for how you can push for spawns and play for those types of things. But overall, these are the basics and then it gets pretty complicated map to map on how you wanna use these strategies to push for certain hills and certain time and how you wanna utilize the tacticals, the smokes, the trophies to your advantage. So overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We have a lot more coming on the channel and we already have quite a few tips videos for Black Ops Cold War that relate to this type of stuff. So I highly recommend you go check them out. And like I said, a lot more coming, some spawns videos, hard point breakdown, tons of learn from the pros videos on hard point and how you play certain maps, things like that. So overall, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you guys did, like, comment, subscribe, share the video if you guys really enjoy it. I do obviously really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. I'm trying to do this full time and I cannot do that without you guys. So I really, really do appreciate it. But as always, guys, I'm your boy Salvation Sleep and we will see you next time. I'm out.